the first thing I want to talk about in terms of these themes is organization. Organization can mean many things. Um, it means there is structure and kind of important plan to our bodies. And there's two things, kind of pieces I want to talk about with it. One is different levels of this organization. So our bodies are um, designed at with different structural levels that go from an atom all the way up to a organism. So here's a visual of that. Levels of organization in biology. We will be focusing on mostly, we'll talk about atoms a bit, so I'm gonna include that, um, mostly molecules up to the multicellular organism level. In reality, right, we will, we'll talk a little bit about environmental factors. So ecosystem, our community, our biosphere also are important for our functioning, but will not be the focus of this course. So these are called levels of organization because um, it's these looking at function across these different literal levels of how our bodies are put together. So physiology and anatomy are the study of molecule to organism. Molecule to organism is going to be the focus. Also, we'll integrate things like physics, chemistry, etc. So physiology requires the integration of bringing together across all these levels. For example, knowing what protein is produced in a certain cell um, doesn't necessarily tell us, not only does that tell us something about that protein and maybe that cell, but also tells us about the function of the whole organ and organism, potentially, knowing what proteins are expressed um, or what other cytokines, etc. It tells us something about the functioning of the whole organism. So it, um, so let's go through these levels. First, we've got atoms. Right? Atoms are going to combine to form molecules. Atoms are reviewed in chapter two. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about them much more besides what, what we see them. So we'll see things like Na plus, um, a positively charged sodium ion. Um, that's an example of, of an atom. These are gonna combine together to form molecules. So molecules are, um, Things like, let me pop it up here, two examples. Lots of examples exist. So biomolecules are going to be a lecture later today. Review some different biomolecules, molecules that exist in your body. Glucose, um, these are proteins in your muscle cells um, involved for muscle contraction. So these are made up of atoms. They're molecules. Now, molecules come together and um, make up cells. Here is an example of a neuron that's going to form neural tissue. I'm going to add in an example of a muscle cell. So these are the cells that are present um, in muscle tissue and are composed of these proteins. So we can identify the different cell types based on the, the molecules that are present in them. And maybe also if this function occurs, we can, we can learn something. So this is the basic you know, right, cell, the requirement for life. So this is where... Um, all living things are made of life, and we'll talk a little bit more about cells, what composes them um, next week. Actually, we'll talk a little bit about it this week as well. So, in multicellular organisms, then, so in a bacterium, it would just be a cell, that's the organism. In multicellular organisms, cells come together to form tissue. So, here, this is, these are neurons um, together. We're going to have muscle tissue, which is composed of muscle cells. So, right, this is these are all related to each other. The so tissues are um, one cell type that carry out the the same function. They're composed of the same type of cells. The tissues are. We'll talk more about tissue. Then we have tissues come together. So more than one tissue type comes together to make an organ. 
So for example, the heart. Here's the heart. I'm going to go here from the, the muscle cells. The heart contains cardiac muscle tissue, which I compose the, the cells here, but it also contains connective tissue, holding everything together, um, nervous tissue, allowing it to um, be modulated by our nervous system. Um, for example, so the heart organ is um, composed of more than one tissue type that do act together to carry out a certain function. In this case, to contract in order to send blood throughout the body. Um, then multiple organs are going to come together to form organ systems. So for our example here with the heart, this is going to be the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is composed of the heart and the blood vessels that connect the heart to the rest of the body. Organ systems work together to carry out a body process in a changing environment. So the heart, along with the blood vessels, acts to carry nutrients, waste, gases throughout the body. The heart can't do that alone. Um, the cardiac muscle tissue can't do that alone. The organ system is what's able to do that. Still can't do it alone, though. It needs to have, like, oxygen from the respiratory system, for example. Um, so integration of organ systems is also important for a functioning organism. So those, oh, so then a multicellular organism is going to be composed of multiple organ systems um, that are then required to each do their job, work together, communicate to carry out the body processes and maintain life. So physiology is the study of all of these levels and the processes at all those levels. Anatomy is the study of the structures at all these levels. And we're going to be looking at, at all these levels. So that's levels of organization. The second part to organization is I want to provide an example of what I talked about before with boundaries. Um, at all these different levels, we've got to have a way to separate it from other stuff or inside from outside. The example I want to give of this is the one I mentioned before, so the cell membrane. And this is able to maintain boundaries related to a lot of stuff. I'm going to talk about fluids right now. So body fluid compartment. So here we've got, what do you think this is? A lot of this is, you can guess what my um, drawings are. Hopefully this is not too hard. Um, this is a cell. I'll talk more about cells next week. But hopefully it's somewhere of you that most basic cell has a plasma membrane. Okay, I said most basic cell, but this is a eukaryote because it has a nucleus. Human cells are eukaryotic, meaning um, they have a nucleus. All animal cells are. The nucleus has their DNA. Um, and then inside the cell, we've got some stuff, a bunch of stuff. Talk more about that cytosol next week. Right now, I want to call it the intracellular fluid. This cellular fluid inside the cell. Okay? It, it exists. Then what do you think we have out here? ECF, which is extracellular fluid. Awesome. So this plasma membrane is important for separating these two fluid compartments, and these two fluid compartments have different compositions, and that's going to be really important for functioning of our nervous system and really all of our cells. One more thing, um, we're talking about fluid compartments here. ICF is just the stuff inside the cell, pretty much um, the same cell to cell, and not much variability inside the cell. Extracellular fluid has two different components to it. What do you think this thing is? This is a blood vessel. It's going to contain a lot of fluid, a lot of extracellular fluid, specifically plasma. Plasma is a type of extracellular cellular fluid. The other type of extracellular fluid is this stuff here right outside of the cell, but it's not in the blood vessel. This is called interstitial fluid. 
interstitial fluid. And then you'll see it IS. Um, so the extracellular fluid is made up of those two components. Um, another example of boundaries is inside and outside of the body. So we've got here um, a kind of a diagram showing outside the body versus inside. Um, inside is this interstitial fluid and the blood. So really inside the body is that, that ECF and all of the cells within that. Um, notice that the digestive tract, the bladder, the uterus, the entire digestive tract and respiratory tract is all accessible to the outside of the body. So that means there's barriers along there that keep it separate. There is a type of tissue called epithelial tissue that separates outside and inside, and that's going to be lining all of these holes here, these cavities, as well as this outside, which is the skin. So inside and outside of the body in that sense. And then lastly, we've got a couple of different cavities, um, well, many different cavities inside the body. Here are some of the main ones. Um, so there is the cranial cavity for the, the skull, vertebral, your vertebrae, thoracic contains the heart and lungs, Ab abdominal contains all your abdominal organs, and then pelvic is your reproductive organs. These are all separated um, by different membranes um, that we'll talk about some of them, some of the linings that surround the heart and lungs, um, the intestines. But here, one that's shown is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is actually um, one of your main respiratory muscles, and it is the physical barrier between a thoracic and abdominal cavity. So keeping these different subcompartments in the body separate um, is something we don't think about as much and is also important for our body's typical function.